you for coming to our presentation. Uh, my name is Brandon. This is William Wadley from McDonald and this is the 2000 League. Today, we will be presenting the robotic arm controller. Our goal with, of this project was to create a controller that would interface with um, any type of input as long as it's formatted and it would feed input with that would give our robotic arm within its bounds of reach as in its space, workspace. Um, another factor that we wanted to hit was that we wanted to get the kinematics to be cap would offload, uh, get the calculation of the kinematics to be calculated on our controller instead of the task manager. So, uh, in order to, for our system to evaluate where to move in joint space, we had to factor in position and orientation. And the fact that we were we wanted to move in joint space, it allowed us to use as a dynamic input feed to the system, whereas feeding separate angles to each motor and moving it that way. So, so the six co components that we need to feed to our system is X, Y, Z, alpha, beta, gamma, also known as roll, pitch, up. To begin our derivation process, we had to characterize our arm based on its motor orientation and length. And by characterizing our robotic arm, it's also known as the Dinner to Hartenberg parameter. By, uh, by symbolically multiplying two translation and two, two translation and two rotation matrices, we get the transformation we get a transformation matrix at which we then apply our DH parameters and get a specific set of forward kinematic equations. However, yaw does not exist on a robotic arm due to the fact that we're using a five degree of freedom. From the forward kinematics, <coughs> we now have position and orientation in, in a form of our five degrees of freedom. A sample of our forward kinematics are PX, AY, and Z. Now to derive the inverse kinematics, we needed to do well. We needed to do a type of uh, an, a type of analysis to figure out the x and y components in form of thetas. So we did an analytical analysis versus another option of doing it is a geometric analysis. And to derive these thetas, there's there's um, a type of constraint that we have to follow by is uh, its dependencies and derivation ease. Therefore, we solve for theta 1, then theta 3, then theta 2, then theta 4, then theta 5. And, okay, well, um, and here are inverse kinematic equations that we derived. For the hardware component, we use uh, Xilinx Spartan 3D FPGA chip and uh, Digilent uh, development code. We chose Xilinx because uh, we know that Xilinx provide an excellent development tool. And because of the JTAG USB download, um, it was easy for us to write the VHDL code and uh, port it on the FPGA port. The FPGA itself has the clock speed of 50 megahertz. Uh, we also use USB to serial UART, which enables us to communicate between uh, PC and our system. Uh, we had a power supply that provided 5 volt of power to each servo motor, and we had uh, two robotic arms with 5 degree of freedom to test our controller. Here is the top level cinematics of the VHDL code that we had. Uh, it's divided into three major components. We have a pre-process, calculation, and this entire thing is the post process. Uh, inside the pre-process, we have UART and fixed point converter. The UART is the serial to parallel UART, and it's operating at 19,200 baud rate. It takes the bits and uh, reassembles into a byte and gives it to the fixed point converter. The fixed point converter uh, parses each coordinate uh, string and extracts the numerical value for uh, x, y, z coordinates or alpha, beta, gamma angles. It does it by multiplying each numeric value with the binary representation of these numbers. And in the end, 
we get a 32-bit fixed point result like this. Uh, we are using 3.29 format for the fixed point, which means that the first three bits represents the integer part of the value, and last 29 bits represent the fraction part of the value, uh, which gives us the range of negative 4 to 3.99, and we keep this 3.29 format throughout our system. Once the fixed point converter gets each of the coordinates, all six of them, it sends a ready signal to calculation module. This is the calculation module. It accepts the uh, X, Y, Z, A, B, Cs that are derived from the uh, inputs. And what we've got here is a uh, internally de uh, derived microcontroller. It's ROM, some RAM, a controller, primarily a finite state machine, <laughs> and various mathematical modules. The, this is a PicoBlaze 8-bit microcontroller. It is instantiated directly into the fabric of the FPGA, and its instructions are contained in the ROM. Its job is to uh, initiate uh, mathematical operations over here in the order in which the equations need to be solved. Uh, we have all of our forward kinematics and all of our inverse kinematics uh, inside uh, instructions in assembly language. Uh, so, uh, and the, the, we use assembly language because we would be able to, not only can we make easy changes to the code and uh, to the equations, but um, theoretically, uh, depending on the operations <coughs> necessary, this system could be used for any configuration of robotic arm. Right now we have a 5R, but it could be anything. You can write the right equations for it. Um, next. Uh, this is the finite state machine. Uh, it controls all of the inputs and outputs to the math modules and also transfers data between the RAM. The PicoBlaze does not actually handle any of the data itself. It's simply issuing uh, uh, address, addresses and instructions to this guy, and then data is moving up and down. It handles all of the wait states, it handles all the setup and hold times, uh, and uh, basically it consists of uh, 257 states and 38 operations. These are the mathematical modules. Uh, the square root, arc tangent, sine, and uh, cosine are use the quartic algorithm, an iterative method for <laughs> determining the uh, answer. And we have a, an adder, subtractor, multiplier, and divider. The divider is the worst. It takes 80 cycles to do our 30 bit division. At the point that all of the mathematics are, are run through the uh, instructions in the ROM, then the output are uh, values suitable for going straight into the PWM for output to 